Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am forever grateful that you take the time out to watch some of the videos that I put out for you. This next video is a little bit, a sliver, a smidgen, a tiny bit of information taken from my recent seminar in Denver, Colorado. If this video brings you any value at all, consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and of course, leaving a comment below asking me your dog training questions and I will answer them in the comments below. Thank you so much for your valuable time. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> A lot of people think if you don't have a problem you don't need to hire a dog trainer and for me um i would agree with you maybe five years ago but now that i'm starting to see dogs open up that like don't have any prior training um and they completely like start engaging into different things and their mind starts ticking a certain way and people are like whoa and you're like yeah so training uh, for most people means that your dog has an issue right or like if you want to go to the gym, you're like, well, I must be, I must be not in good shape. It's like, not really. People go to the gym all the time to feel better, to, to better themselves. Same thing with dogs and dog training. And this is good for dog trainers um, because you can use this as marketing of like, just because your dog doesn't have a problem doesn't mean you can't come in and work with a professional, you know? And it's really, really cool. And that, that's something I discovered in the last six months as well, um, developing different programs for different things um, because that's, I'm a fix it guy. Um, and to, to be frank, that's all I really care about is I, I want to work with a dog with a problem because um, that's what my passion is. Everybody that has a dog should be doing this sort of stuff, you know, learning new things. Even if you take one little thing away from this that changes your relationship with your dog, totally worth the half a day you spent. So the same thing where you like Google like my finger, hurt, finger hurts and then all of a sudden you're dying and had all these different diseases. <laughs> same thing with dog training, okay? Um, this is a big one. Uh, so dog training um, is a very unregulated, very highly political thought about uh, thing because 70, well, this was, this was, the statistics were done a little, a couple years ago, but 70% of Americans have dogs. And I think like 50% of Americans have more than one dog. So almost everyone has a dog, right? And everyone has an opinion. And again, when we talk about opinions, um, there are certain people that uh, advocate for dogs. Uh, we have a lot of um, good advocacy and we have a lot of terrible, deadly advocacy. Um, some of them will be politicians, some of them being actors and musicians, and they will put their emotions and thoughts off of things that they don't know about and it'll kill dogs. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, but training for me, I, I wanna learn. I'm a sponge every day of my life. Um, I have found that my experiences and my, um, my approach has been helpful and useful for the majority of people that I work with, which is what created me to be here today. I started training for free and then people were like, you did more than what I paid for. That's, that, that was something that was really big for me. And so when I started working with dogs, I never wanted to be the best. I never wanted to be any of that. I just wanted to, to help. And that's what's got me to the platform that I'm at now and being able to do what I do and be here. Super grateful for this because I'm able to spread my knowledge and help you guys out with your dogs. Um, but I think it's become way too political and uh, what's hurting, what's, what's actually suffering is the dogs. Is children from the time that they're adolescent, pre, pre K, if you will, like, like four or five year old, all the way up until you get your masters to your, in your twenties. We go to school, we educate ourselves to, to prepare us for life. Right? So when we're babies, until we're young adults or adults, we are, we are training by professionals to prepare for a better lifestyle to do what we should be doing in life. Dogs, a lot of times don't get anything. They're just like, here you go, good luck. Oh, there's a problem, you think? Oh, we have issues, you think? So we get dogs and we wanna live with them. We have a new roommate that's never been socialized never been to, to proper etiquette class of like, my dog's jumping all over the place or my dog's doing this or my dog's doing that. It's like, yeah, that's, they don't know otherwise. 
So um, that's an interesting concept that I, that I thought about recently of how much education and how much foundation goes into our education. Not that it's comparable, but if you think about it, it kind of is. Where we have dogs that we love so, so, so much and that we spend 10 to 15 years with in our house, sleeping with us, with our kids, with our whatever, and we don't put them through anything, nothing, like not even one class. Right. And, and so so that's something I've been trying to really preach of like, I don't care where you train. I, I send when people I, I sign up probably 50 percent of the people that come into my facility because I don't think I'm a good fit for them because they come in with behavioral issues that down the road can do for half the price. And so I, I never take anything that I'm not comfortable with or I think is unfair. I tell people all the time, go down the road. They're at half the price. They can definitely help you out. Um, but when you have a big issue, call me back. Um, but I think it's just important for us to understand how uh, we have, we're, we're, we're becoming more of a dog planet. I mean, across the board, there's countries that used to not be nice to dogs that are now really nice to dogs. So it's becoming more and more relevant. Um, so the best training method possible has a hundred percent success rate across the entire world, whatever works. So that's something I tell about all the time. People, um, and with respect to dog owners, because you go to, you go to Google and you see all these torturous things that really psycho serial killer-esque type people do. And um, it's associated with certain things that, you know, certain tools or certain uh, mythology that we may use in a different way. So when people ask like, what's your training style, I respect it. However, it is a bit frustrating because it's like, who do you, what do you, not just me, I'm just saying like, we're a company that helps dogs. What do you think we're gonna do? Like, how do you think this is gonna work? Um, but there are people out there that are negatively affecting the dog training community um, just because of ignorance, um, psychopaths, like, you know. Um, but we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But if your dog is happy and you are comfortable, you have found your match. So if you go to a dog trainer, I don't care if they're purely this or purely that or negative this or negative that. If you're comfortable and it's working and your dog is progressing, you're good. Don't overthink it. That's it. If you go into a place and you, you say, hey, what's that? And they tell you, you're good. Um, a lot of times people will come in and say, my last trainer told me to, to and this is a true story. Um, you know, I say, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And the dog's reactive or whatever. And they, the trainer told the, the dog owners to bark back at the dog. And if you get close enough to the dog to just, to just like snap at it. And I was like, okay, all right. So does that make sense? And they're like, no. I'm like, then why were you doing it, right? And, and so for me, that's what I've started to become is I'm trying to be the light in the dog world, if you will. Like I, I'm friends with people on so many different spectrums of the dog world. I'm friends with everybody. And what I really like to do is I want to bring to the surface in the dog training community of like, we, we all are working for the same goal. If the dog is, is progressing and getting better at what the dog owner wanted to do, you're good. But if you're not, then you need to refer that dog to somebody else or switch gears or switch different uh, methods or something like that. I have a really hard time with people. The only thing I have a hard time with in a dog training world is people who say that there's only one way to do one thing. That's a problem. It's like education, right? If you went to school and they said, Timmy, Buddy, you're not gonna cut it. And you kick him out at like five because he can't read like the other kids. Well, our, our way is only this way. That's not what we do with kids. Why would we ever do that with dogs? And so that's the only problem I, I have with any dog training riff out there is I, I do not agree with having a one dimensional style because certain dogs need certain things. That's that simple. And it's, it's irresponsible, I believe, for people to just assume that if this way doesn't work, because the alternative for them killed the dog. And that for me is like, I lose sleep over that stuff, which is why I'm so passionate about what I do, which is why I work with dogs. Is I, I love dogs. I don't want to see anybody hurt or dogs be hurt. And I said, how can I help? Here I am. Um, so we're going to talk about tools. 